Welcome to the E Vagabond video blog Cascade Loop edition. The Cascade Loop is in Washington State, north of Seattle and south of the Canadian border. The Cascade Loop is known to be scenic and loaded with electric vehicle chargers. Off I go with Elise, the Fiat 500e, small but mighty, 2015, and a luggage rack. It's April 22nd, 2019, and this is the Cascade Loop edition of the E-Vagabond blog. So, some things I had to do. I was in town, got some new struts on the car, whatever that is, things that hold up things, I guess. I don't know, not my area of expertise. Anyway, got some new stuff for the car, parts, and um, put this camera on the dash. We'll see how that works. I already had the camera, and I already had a hole in the dash. <laughs> uh, some obsolete technology called TomTom Tom or something. I never used it. It, you know, there was just this hole. So, you know, don't do this to your car. Poor Elise, the uh, Fiat 500e is uh, paying the price to show you some stuff. Here's my new Kenwood stereo. Woohoo! The old, uh, the old uh, stereo it came with quit on the trip before last. <clears throat> uh, I was trying to dig out. Anyway, under under the seat, you can't really see it. Maybe you can sort of see it. There is a uh, subwoofer. Ah, whoa, there's hair down there. No, that's the seat cover. Anyway, food. Um. There is a subwoofer which I had added to the car like immediately after I bought it because I care a lot about music. So now I have a sound system, stoves, so I had to do the last trip without one. But I got to bring you along and talk your ear off about electric cars. Anyway, Cascade Loop. There's lots on the internet about the Cascade Loop. It's mostly a lot of marketing hype, be forewarned. You know, like I tried to find a list of cities where am I going? <laughs> you might want to know that. Anyway, I am here in Cedro Woolley. Great name of a town. Came here on my last trip. It's directly south of the doubtful monastic farm where I live between Nooksack and Nugent's Corner. So, there's some hills. A little snow out there. So I often stop here because it's due south on Highway 9, and it is also on Highway 20, which is strongly featured, heavily featured, on the Cascade Loop. See the mountains? See the snow? Anyway, what to look at while I'm talking? There's a charger. Yay, it's free! There's a charger. It's busted. It's been that way for a while. No Comcast truck here today. They're probably at work. I'm sure they'll show up later. Anyway, there's another charger. Comcast truck is not electric, in case you were wondering. Um, so traveling a little lighter, because it's a short trip. It's a 440 mile loop, apparently. And so my uh, hitch rack, I was tempted to leave it home, honestly, but I think the car would just be too squished inside. And uh, so there's just a little cooler in the utility bag where I put all the utility stuff. So, loop, you can start anywhere and then end where you started. So I intend to make it back here to Cedar Woolley. Oh, I don't know, a few days, a couple days. We'll see how it goes. I'm not in a rush. At least I think I'm not in a rush. And uh, glad to have you along. Thanks for joining me. One more thing I'd like to say about Cedar Woolley is the people at Truck Toys were very, very good to me. Um, all professionals. Totally recommend them if you need a trailer hitch installed or stuff like that. I didn't mind. I have a tiny electric car instead of a very big truck. So I left Cedra Woolley on Highway 20. And Highway 20 goes right through Cedra Woolley, so it's not too hard to find. And I am going west. I have opted to do the loop counterclockwise because of my experience of driving most of these roads previously and I know that the hardest section will be easier going this direction. So off I go, headed through Burlington. Didn't stop in Burlington though you certainly can charge in Burlington. 
And there are other towns nearby that are not on the loop that you may or may not want to visit, such as Mount Vernon or La Conner or Anacortes. All, you know, pretty interesting places. Getting some rain here. It's a chilly-ish day, but not unusual for late April in the Pacific Northwest. So you saw I was on some flat terrain going across the Skagit Valley, skipping on by Burlington. After the flat of Skagit Valley, heading up the hill, crossing over onto Fidalgo Island. And off to my right, that was the Swinomish uh, trading post, I recommend, if you want to get some Native American goods. And up ahead, you see the refinery in Anacortes. Make you feel good about driving an electric car, doesn't it? So, um, you have to uh, get in the left lane and turn left to stay on Highway 20, heading for Deception Pass. Don't wait to the last minute to get over because this, uh, this can get backed up pretty well on a nicer day. And then there's uh, a couple of traffic circles you have to go through to stay on 20. Do not go to Anacortes, I mean, unless you want to. And then there's a you know, significant hill. So Skagit Valley is flat, and then Fidalgo Island is a bit hillier, but nothing to be concerned about if you have a decent charge. I'm not planning to charge again until Oak Harbor. So that is on Whidbey Island. And Deception Pass is what connects Fidalgo Island to Whidbey Island. It's a pretty scenic drive. At Deception Pass is especially scenic. You can't really see it from my camera, but it is, uh, it's stunning, especially on a beautiful day. So now I'm on Whidbey Island, and you can charge at the Deception Pass Park if you have your own charger. There's one plug. I've used it. I can confirm this, at least when I last used it, that you could indeed charge your car for free in the park if you have your own charger. That's the turn there. Hmm, looking at their luggage rack, I think I should put a box back there instead of a dry bag. Hmm, might test that out on the next trip. Whidbey Island's not a bad place. In fact, it's a lovely place if you don't mind naval aircraft overhead. The charge point in Oak Harbor is right downtown. And here's a great deal, $124 ticket if you block it with your ice. And then I'm off to Green Bank Farms for my next charge. Nice, hooray. Green Bank Farms. There's the charger, it's a Clipper Creek, it's free, it's got two plugs. One of them is being used by an e-tron. What's an e-tron? Well, this is it. I don't know, I've never heard of an e-tron, but, you know, I'm not making this up where it works. Anyway, um, cool place. It's got like a pond and food and art and cafe and pie, cheese, wine, and a cool educational garden over there. Check it out. Oh, I see tulips. It's that time of year. So even though there's a Green Bank cheese shop, Green Bank cheese is not from here. It's from Wisconsin. I didn't know. So now I'm learning. Everywhere I go today, I am learning new things, or, you know, putting my foot in my mouth, as the case may be. But here we go. Cheese shop. Kind of hard to see this map, I suppose, but Whidbey Island is pretty big, and it's separated from the mainland by Camino Island. Oh, and this body of water. Puget Sound, Salish Sea. I have come to harass the wildlife. Medium geese, eh? Next stop after Green Bank Farms is the ferry terminal to leave Whidbey Island and go to Muckleteo. So this is in Clinton, Washington. So I'm going to pull up to this toll booth, pay my $7.20, and wait about 20 minutes for the boat. This whole trip is going to cost me next to nothing, you know, unless you count the money I spent on my car and my tablet and such. Woohoo! Getting on the boat! Yay! 
nice view even on a cloudy day. So when you get off the boat in Mukilteo, you need to find your way kind of on your own to Highway 2. So that means going to Everett where I'm hoping to charge my car at the Fred Meyer so I can walk over to the camera store. Need some supplies for my video blogging. The Fred Meyer chargers I usually avoid in Everett because they are Blink brand and they are ironically often on the Blink or and or unreadable. So uh, gonna give it a try anyway. They look lively enough. The screen's even readable but the chargers didn't work. And the camera shop didn't have my supplies for my obsolete camera. We're at the Everett Courthouse, or wait, Sonomish County Courthouse? Public parking garage, something like that. I like this charger, doesn't it look like it's like from the 1960s or something? Space age. And uh, maximum four hours. Lots of chargers, lots of well-marked parking. Cool. Thanks, Department of Energy. Hey, why aren't there a whole lot more of these? <laughs> but yeah, I'm going for the one. Well, for the 18 that they have here, whatever. Ooh. Mm. Anyway, um, I was striking out all over the place. Struck out at the Best Buy. Struck out at Ken's camera. Struck out on the blink chargers at the Fred Meyer. Having kind of a rough time of it in Everett. It's been raining pretty good. It's rush hour. Visibility's poor. Traffic's kind of bad. B for Birch. Okay, so looking for the chargers. Go to level B. Anyway, I came here because it's familiar. I've charged here before. There's lots of chargers and people are abandoning them left and right as they leave their jobs to go home. You get 30 minutes free parking and 30 minutes free charging. So I figured in that 30 minutes, maybe I would get it sorted out, you know, where to go, what to do next, since uh, things have been not going all that well for me right now. So time to go figure out my next move. From Mukilteo, you want to get on Highway 2 going east and then I decided to go charge at the Evergreen State Fairgrounds in Monroe, partly because other people are having trouble getting these chargers to work, so I kind of wanted to check them out again. I've used them before. I've had no problem, but um, it depends on how old your car is, apparently. Anyway, so you want to turn left on 179th Street Southeast, go in through the entrance. If that gate is shut, you're probably out of luck. Whoa, what's going on with the camera? Obsolete technology, getting more obsolete by the minute. So I'm showing you the whole thing here because it's a little tricky to find these. So you're right near the administration building. And look, it's an Eaton charger. Kind of old, definitely not to be confused with Eaton rifles. So I'm here at the Evergreen State Fairgrounds in Monroe. Good news is Charger's working. I had no trouble with that charger. All I did was plug it in. So I think that is the uh, 2015 EV Advantage. <laughs> I'm really glad it's working because my range is poor. You can see I'm only on my first bar here. That's the good news. And that's the good news. Pouring rain. Pouring rain. Pouring rain. And that's kind of a shame because there's a really cool um, totem pole garden display. Like, see it? It's really cool. Historic totem poles in the pouring rain. You know, the fact that it's pouring rain isn't even really what's stopping me. What's really stopping me is incredibly loud car racing happening here. So that's what you get. I don't want to stay here very long because there's nothing for me to do but sit in the car and, and, you know, listen to the miserable noise and watch the rainfall. But, you know, pity. I'm not asking for pity. I'm just, you know, stating here's the facts. This trip's not very enjoyable right now. The E Vagabond video blog is brought to you by the Daofawu Monastery, offering non-denominational monastic living.